What's up guys? We decided to do this Q and A. One and two. Questions? Um, before that. Maybe I start to remind myself how to read first. And the first question is. Hello dear viewers! What's up guys? James Dean here. We decided to do this Q&A. Um, huge thanks to everyone who submitted the questions and uh, picked out our favorite few, so I hope you guys enjoy. And the first question is for Craig.Pierce. How did you first meet? How did you two first meet? Maybe I start to remind myself how to read first. Uh, I first met Peter back in 2014. Um, it was actually back when we first built my Falcon Tires S14 and we're competing at the first round of the Drift All-Stars European Championship in London. Our two meet first time in London, if I remember correctly. It was the very nice round in front of the Olympic Stadium. And Peter was there competing with his uh, Bud Man Auto teammate, David Karkashik. Uh, I heard a lot about the guys, I didn't even know how to pronounce Peter's second name. I um, heard a lot about the guys before this event and I remember seeing Peter drive and I was like, he's really, really good. And uh, I remember this round uh, quite well because I won. <laughs> and guess what? Because James's car was broken. Then later on after that event, um, we got chatting and um, as that year progressed, we were probably he was my biggest rival in Europe and uh, just between our fun on track and off track we became really good friends and uh, it, it just fast forwarded into what it is today which is an incredible teammate, an incredible friend and uh, we're lucky enough to do some of the most amazing things I can even imagine. Um, it's been an absolutely incredible few years and uh, some stories and times that I'll absolutely never forget. Uh, yeah, the second question. JBest240, how did you become teammates and how long have you been friends? Uh, it was kind of natural, natural, I would say, since... Probably late 2015 and for the 2016 season. Two of us really get a good connection and after, after the round we always like to meet each other and have some... Uh, little discussion. We just got working together, we started doing things together as a team and when it really really uh, kicked into gear was when we tried to take on the challenge of uh, competing in Formula Drift. That was the base that we actually decided would be definitely not a big change if we were to team up and back then it was three of us because it was also with David uh, Karkosik, which I also say hello to. Um, yeah, that was absolutely unbelievable. Formed a new team, Wartos Drift team, with this car right behind me and uh, Peter's S15 as well. And it was just an incredible journey, an incredible partnership and friendship. It's it's absolutely unreal. I'm I'm very lucky to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was you know natural. We seem to have a good bond. Yeah. Next, Kyle X Matthews. What is it like to drive a thousand horsepower drift car? Uh, it's good. Next question. No, actually, it's uh, really good. It's pretty mental. Um, so my first experience of probably getting close to the 1000 horsepower mark was with the uh, Warthouse Drift Team S15. And we were testing before Long Beach in 2017. And I was quite impressed with the car as it was um, without nitrous. And I was driving the car and said, this is probably the fastest car I've ever driven and I think it was about 820 horsepower at the time. And I should add something, so I would say that it's good when it's working and uh, actually we are quite fortunate because our cars for majority of time works. Uh, but you have to be careful about lots of things, you have to look for a lot of parameters which are mainly taken care of by our main chief mechanic Gelo. So if anything doesn't work, it's his fault, not ours, of course. Uh, but to be honest, it's it's good fun when everything works, but uh, also you need to be careful so everything works. And then we, Peter was obviously using nitrous and his car broke down in testing. So I got a chance to test the nitrous. I, I, I wasn't interested, but I had the chance to test it. So. We put the nitrous uh, bottle into my car, turned it on, and it was my first experience of 150 shot of nitrous. And 
running close to a thousand horsepower and it just blew my mind and uh before that happened i was you know i was happy with what i had but um after experiencing that real surge of power it just blew my mind and now all of my cars have nitrous um probably except for the rx7 but everything else uh, has nitrous it's amazing stuff and crazy fun to use and uh, experiencing that much power under your right foot is incredible but but uh, it's also uh, quite expensive thrill i would say because uh, because the cars are expensive and yeah that's a great answer mm -hmm. uh juan hora mires 41111, no, only two ones, so 411, so 411. Uh, which track is your favorite? Be it Formula Drift, Drift Masters, or other. Um, I have a few favorite tracks, I think. It's hard to pick one, um, so I'll pick one of each. Uh, so in Europe, my favorite track is actually, it's kind of split between Monello Park in Ireland. Absolutely love driving at home in front of the home crowd, and the track is awesome as well. And uh, Riga in Latvia. Uh, Beaker Niki straight street circuit, absolutely incredible track. Um, four gear flat out, full throttle transitions, and we're basically drifting in, um, in 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 the center of a city where the racetrack is based. It's just wild, and there's like a forestry area. It's it's incredible to drive, and uh, I always love going back there. Uh, my favorite track will be Long Beach, probably. I really like Long Beach. The atmosphere. And the weather is usually great and yeah the atmosphere because it's the first round of the year not this time uh hopefully we will have a first round but i didn't say that and uh, yeah that would be the one jack rives peter james how are you practicing the fd layouts while at your homes in europe uh, so until this point everything before um now I used to just go to the events and uh, try to learn them as quick as possible because obviously we live in Europe so we don't have the opportunity to to get to the tracks beforehand and test um, but now I got the new simulator um, it's definitely going to be a great way to, to practice and to get some seat time and uh, things in before we actually get to the track so I'll be making good use of that from, from now on. In front of the screens and that's a good way to practice but uh, yeah, that's a small amount of time. The majority of time is just watching the events simply over and over again and just try to not repeat, repeat the mistakes which were already made by us or somebody else. So learn on the mistakes simply. Yeah, I would say so. That's a good answer. Uh, Finn Barnes, who would win in Thumb War? Tambor is the one with the uh, thumbs. Uh, so, I don't know, I would have to check who has a bigger thumbs. That's a big advantage. Yeah. I don't want to say that James is definitely has a bigger one because he's taller and it sounds very bad. So, I wouldn't say that. So, I don't know. I hope that I'm me. <laughs> Patrick 97 b who were your biggest inspirations when you first started drifting? Love the Candy Machine videos, by the way. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's emotional right now. Uh, so, uh, who was my biggest inspiration? I would say at the very start, probably my, my brother Mike. Um, I first saw drifting back in 2002 in Ireland, uh, and that's, that's where he competed in his first event. And I was there as a 10 year old kid at the time. Uh, supporting my brother who was just entering the event for fun and uh, he managed to win the event so I used to follow Mike um, with all the rallies he used to do back in the day um, getting stuck into cars in the workshop and I used to be like his uh, his shadow basically following him wherever he went. Uh, first when I started was Pavel Trella because back then when he was driving his uh, S13 I was he was really impressive in this chassis uh, he still is but back then when I didn't know drifting too well, so it was like 2010, 2011, it was something very impressive, especially in Poland, because I didn't understand Japanese too much, so it wasn't um, quite understandable, understandable that much to me. So I would say that uh, in, in my own background, it was him. 
Uh, besides that, um, my dad is a big inspiration for numerous oh. reasons. Uh, being an awesome guy, he is used to build rally cars for a living and uh, navigate and rally himself as well back in the day. And he still watches and loves everything that that we do. And he's a real motorsport guy at heart. And uh, yeah, that's exactly the way I, I want to turn out in the future. So I would say the two of them. So uh, then was James after that, because I met James and he become uh, quite, a, quite a hero in front of me. So it was it was great that uh, after some time I can learn for him personally. So that was a great thing to do. Great memory. Lee Quin Quinlan, what has been James's and Peter's favorite memory or achievements as teammates? Ho ho ho! Too many of them. Too many of them. I honestly, my favorite thing about us is when we actually get into a battle on track, and usually. There is contact. Uh, the crowd's going crazy, and we're we're just insanely pumped up as well. It's it's a crazy feeling to when we do have the chance to battle each other because it's just all or nothing. Yeah, it was the moment I would say that we start to realize that the FD is possible, that it's gonna happen, and we we're gonna do it together as a, as a team. Uh, it was a big thing for me. So, in my perspective, that, that was the moment. And I would say our favorite achievement, my personal favorite achievement, was probably back in 2017 where Peter won Irwindale Speedway, the final event of the season. And at the same day, I managed to get on the podium and win my first FD Championship. So, that was definitely a standout uh, event for the team. Um, but we've had many, many good memories, uh, multiple finals together and just uh, loads of amazing times. So. It's hard to pick the one. That was my choice, and you have to respect that, because this is my answer. Um, and you don't have other choice, you can just pause it and exit also. So, probably I will do that if I will be on your position. Bran went. 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 Where do you guys finish first and second at the event? That's good. That's perfect. What are your drinks and food of choice for the after party? Hmm. Honestly speaking, if that happens, it always ends up being a late night. Um, Peter Peter eat, eats quite well, and yeah, so if he manages to win an event, we know we're having pizza, so that's absolutely brilliant. I'll eat pizza for breakfast, I'm easy going that way. Uh, when it comes to drink, uh, whatever flows, and anything goes. Probably it will be a drink and food in one, so it will be a strawberry milkshake, yes. That would be my choice to after party, sweet after party uh, celebration. What's the worst mistake you've ever made during a competition in the car or not? <laughs> uh, so since this question is for me and James. Tricky question, um, Eddie. So I would say the biggest mistake I made was probably back in 2010. Um, in Armandale Speedway, it's, this track is really, really difficult and I actually felt very comfortable and confident on the track um, at this event and I had a number of battles ahead of me and I believed that I could win every battle and I could see myself on the podium before it even happened. So that was the first and last time that ever happened to me uh, because I went out in top 16, I felt like I could beat my opponent and I was doing a lead run, I felt really confident running the wall and I ran it too hard, hit the back of the car and next thing the front of the car was smashed in and uh, that was it, knocked myself out and I couldn't believe it, um, I just felt like, felt a bit stupid really uh, for just feeling that everything was going to work out and ever since that day I never take anything for granted and it just shows you have to take everything one step at a time so I think that could be some advice as well, but it, it's definitely a true true story for me. And the biggest one which I made was at the event called Goodwood. And I was chasing James, it was as the warm-up run, and somebody in front of us decided to break heavily. James break heavily on time, and I assumed that, yeah, James will accelerate very soon, so I didn't break quite much. It was the first run of the main day. And thanks to that, I crashed into James. He crashed into the car in front of him, and there was a coolant and oil everywhere on the track. Beginning of the day, first run. 
imagine the happiness of the organizers when they realized that the whole track and the whole event in the main day will be delayed <laughs> because of the candy man Dan Man 16i, teammates aside, who is your toughest opponent? The first name which appears in front of my eyes is uh, Frederick Asbo, I would say. He is a really consistent and uh, skilled driver. Then uh, the guys from Shanahan's, in case of guys from Europe, definitely tough opponents. Oh, I would say teammates aside, I would say Peter is crazy, obviously, but he's my teammate. Um, I would say I've had some crazy battles with Frederick Asbo, um, Odi, like lots of loads of guys in the US. But myself and Asbo have been fighting for the championship the last couple of years uh, in the US, and he's been my closest rival. And uh, he's been a bit unlucky a few times. Um, but I would say probably, probably Frederick is an incredible driver. Uh, getting more hungry and hungry for that win every year, um, as well as everyone else. So I think when the 2020 season actually gets into gear, it's going to be a crazy year ahead. So just just look at the beginning of the general classification of each round of the Mac and Formula Drift, and you will have the answer. Um, Rex Prentice. What annoys you both about each other? What annoys you most about uh, Peter? I would say I annoy Peter in loads of ways, like asking too many questions. What does he think about this? What does he think about that? And what annoys me about Peter is he doesn't want to answer the questions because he likes peace and quiet before runs. And I, um, I watch as much as I can uh, on the live stream while qualification is happening, while Peter is the opposite. He likes to chill out and listen to music. Uh, but that's probably it, really. But he's too tall. Always, when you talk to him, you have to like, hey, James, what's up? That's wrong. Harley 86096. How excited are you that the cage shock is back in the works with Hoonigans? Uh, it's absolutely incredible. Um, I think Peter is probably more excited than I am because it's like his baby. Um, he loves the thing and I love it too. Oh, this is very exciting. But it's going to be awesome to see it come together. I can't wait to hear it for the first time. Uh, the wheels were so big in the front that we had to cut a lot of the, the floor space away uh, for the wheels to turn, so I'm not sure if they will turn, and hopefully um, hopefully we'll be able to drift the thing, but I'm sure we'll figure it out one way or the other. Cannot wait to hear it. Uh, K-Track is back. Yes, K-Track is back, and that's very good. That's excellent. I cannot wait to hear it for the first time. I just watched these episodes and hope, praise that they will fire it up in the next one. And uh, yeah, but this virus is not helping. So I hope, I hope that uh, still, still there will be one day that this little thing gonna move and scream to the sunshine, towards the sunshine. Yeah, I need to practice. Towards the sunshine.